The third uh, part of my little presentation, which um, Ben asked me to provide, and this would be the fun part, but we can skip that. <laughs> you can take a few minutes. A few minutes. So this is a picture of Werner Vinge in the 80s when I was a young man. It seems unbelievable today, but uh, there I read these novels of him uh, about the technical, technological singularity. So the idea back then of Werner Vinge was uh, accelerating progress gets faster and faster and at some point becomes incomprehensible and you have this thing that he called the um, technological singularity and first he published that in scientific, uh, science fiction novels and I read so many science fiction novels back then and these were one of the, and most of them were really bad but this was really interesting stuff I thought and then later I read in a, a, a book by Ray Kurzweil that actually is the first guy who came up with this idea of a converging uh, history, a singularity, uh, probably, perhaps, I don't know, was uh, Stanislav uh, Ulam. And, uh, and this guy here, uh, Werner Vinge, though, is uh, probably uh, really the first one who elaborated on that concept in many, many ways, not only in science fiction novels, but also in scientific publications. Now, I asked myself, is it really true? Is there such a pattern in history that fits the, the um, um, that fits that uh, idea of a singularity, a historic singularity, and yes, there is one. And it's um, amazing how, how simple it is. It turns out if you take as a basic uh, interval a human lifetime, which takes, one, uh, which takes 80 years, then the nth main chapter of history in the history books, you just open a history book, is two to the n human lifetimes before Omega, the singularity, which is uh, for some reason in 2014, and let me show that to you. So Omega is 2040. Many people are coming up with a number like that, you know, 2040. So I take that as well. I say one lifetime is 80 years, and it's uh, true that always there have been lifetimes uh, like that. And the average lifetime of previous millennia was shorter, mostly because of the high infant mortality. So 80 years always was a, a good lifetime. And my error bars are not, in most cases, they are really much smaller than 10%. Now, two to the nine lifetimes ago, 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens, sapiens, uh, comes into existence and, and colonizes the world. And we take half of that, and we hit an act exactly, um, as far as we know, the invention of long distance weapons like bow and arrow and the hunting revolution, and we take half of that. And we hit exactly the um, beginnings of civilization, the invention of agriculture, the first permanent settlements, and um, and uh, the first walls, etc. And we take half of that. And it's exactly the first high civilizations in Sumeria and Egypt, and the most important invention of recorded history, the one that made recorded history possible, uh, namely writing. 5,000 years ago, in, uh, it's not quite, quite clear, in Sumeria or in Egypt. And we take half of that. And it's exactly the peak of the ancient world under the Greeks. Back then there was um, there was this huge empire, the Persian Empire, which in many ways was much more remarkable than the Roman Empire, but it's not as much covered in Western history books. But uh, it had probably half, almost half of humanity in, in there, and probably clearly more than, than half of uh, the world economy. And it existed 2,500 years ago, and at the fringes of the empire, exciting things happened, especially in Greece. In Greece, that during that time, all the basic uh, Western values were created. Uh, democracy was invented, philosophy as we know it, the first formal proofs appeared, perfect, uh, anatomically perfect sculptures were made for the first time. Engines were created. The steam engine is a Greek invention, but was not commercialized back then. Uh, harmonic music was invented. Uh, the, the basis of all Western music, organized sports, the, the Olympics and things like that. Uh, and at the same time, the Old Testament was written, the basis of the three Abrahamic religions. And at the same time, in the other part um, of the world, in, in India, the um, uh, Buddhism was uh, created. And uh, Greece was not the only uh, technically, uh, technologically advanced uh, part of the world. In China, the first calculation tools emerged. India invented the zero. So that was an amazing time back then, and we take half of that. And it's exactly uh, the golden age of the, um, uh, of the Islamic world, the Islamic golden age, and at the same time, the most important invention of the past 2,000 years took place, namely the invention of book print in China. 
omega minus 1,300 years. And we take half of that. And it's exactly, it's exactly um, the, the beginning of the, of the new uh, age, well, at the, at the end of this, uh, almost right now, right uh, in, uh, at this point here, the Mongolian Empire was the largest uh, empire ever and contained most of the known landmass and uh, the two major civilizations of that time were within its borders and, um, and the Chinese invented guns and gunpowder and rockets and did the first explorations so Tseng He, he explored from China um, uh, the east coast of Africa and Australia and slightly later, uh, 50 years later maybe, the Europeans went the other way around and discovered the rest of the world, or as they said, they discovered the rest of the world. Yeah, like this picture here. This is the, of 1420, that is the ship that Tseng He used to explore um, large parts of the world, or one of the ships he used. And that is the Santa Maria, 50 years later, that uh, Columbus used to uh, rediscover America. That is, yeah, I, I call him Zheng He, but I don't know what is the real pronunciation. Zhong He. Zhong He. I'm sorry. So it was Zhong He. <laughs> Zhong He. He's the Columbus of China. Yeah. And then uh, the Western book print, which um, some people call the most important invention of the past 1,000 years. And the scientific revolution starts and we take half of that. And it's exactly the age of enlightenment and the, um, the, the first steam engine, the first commercial steam engine, unlike the old Greek steam engines, the new common engine was really used and, um, and Leibniz invented the binary arithmetics and built computers like this one and Newton revolutionized physics um, and this is one of his telescopes and uh, uh, the fundamental um, uh, um, theorem of calculus was published uh, by, by Leibniz and Newton also said he also had that um, had found that and we take half of that now we are two lifetimes uh, before Omega and it's exactly what many people call the second industrial revolution when Otto invented the gasoline engine and all these combustion engines the diesel engine etc were created and and Diamond Benz came up with a car there's a replica of the first car but this reminds me of something. This reminds me of something. You know that Obama is extremely popular in Germany. Did you know that? When he went to Germany, there were 200,000 people uh, who cheered him. But the other day, he said something shocking to many Germans because he said the car was invented in America. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say by whom, maybe by Abraham Lincoln. Or <laughs> <laughs> but now many Germans are, are, are worried that next time he will say uh, Abraham Hink Lincoln also invented Lederhosen and Sauerkraut. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, also um, maybe the most important invention of that time was the uh, germ theory of disease which uh, saved hundreds of millions of lives and founded modern medicine. Cheap electricity became available, modern chemistry. So, and many of the big companies that are still existing today, they were founded right there. And the highest building ever was built, the Eiffel Tower was right at that time, and we take half of that. And you see, I'm always missing the, the awful parts of world history. I'm always missing the things like the Second World War. This is right uh, in the 60s, Omega minus one lifetime, and Sputnik, uh, starts the space age and Apollo lands on the moon and DNA is discovered or gets at least a, a Nobel Prize for the discovery and uh, modern pop culture emerges <coughs> and the computer was invented long before that but uh, for the first time uh, it became a commercial, import commercially important thing hydrogen bombs um, give a new quality to the concept of war and again whenever think, people think uh, things are going forward they build the highest building ever so back then that was the World Trade Center and the, the population explosion of the um, 20th century probably the most outstanding feature of the 20th century was at its peak uh, it was triggered in 1908 by Fritz Haber who came up with artificial fertilizer and then within one century the population went up from 1.6 billion to 6 billion in the end but the highest derivative, that was right there in the 60s, which in many ways defined the world as we know it today, and we take half of that. And this is now, of course. And again, people are buying the highest building ever. Um, 
this is, I think, twice as high as the World Trade Center. They are building that in Dubai. And the world is transformed again by networks. Uh, so the World Wide Web was created at the CERN. Here we see a picture of the CERN um, where Tim Berners-Lee created the WWW and, um, and the cell phones, of course, uh, and, and, the, and the GPCs. They transformed industry and private lives. And of course, the mathematical theory of optimal universal AI emerges right at this time. <laughs> and so how is it going to go, uh, continue? Well, many say, claim that in, in 2020, uh, one fourth lifetime before Omega, PC, PCs uh, will match the raw computational uh, power of a human brain. And then 10 years before Omega, who knows what's going to happen? And, <laughs> five years and two years and then you know obviously it's converging history is converging you see here's another one uh, that shows that history is converging now it's not based on human lifetimes anymore but on the main breakthroughs in computer science 1623 Schickard builds the first computer uh, two centuries later Babbage comes up with the with the, with program controlled computers so Schickard's computer you couldn't program you could just do certain uh, simple arithmetic operations it didn't work, though, because maybe the, um, well, for several reasons. And then one century later, the first really working computer um, was built by Zeus in 1941. Right in a decade, in the 30s, everything changed. Um, con uh, um, Justus Lilienfeld invented, uh, patented the first transistor. Gödel founded theoretical computer science, and together with Turing, who came up with the Turing machine. And by the end of the 30s, the, the field um, as we know it today was uh, more or less established. And then half a century later, 1990, the WWW was created and within a few years changed the world again. And of course, you, you know something about statistics and machine learning. You know, if you've got three data points, <laughs> then you can extrapolate without hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> Two centuries, one century, one half century. And obviously, it's going to converge again exactly at, in, in 2014. Uh, just for fun. Just for fun, let's redefine Omega not, is not 2040 anymore, but 1540. 1540. Now, 96 years before Omega, which is now 1540, the most important thing in the time life list of the top events of the previous millennium happened, namely the invention of, or the reinvention of book print by Gutenberg. 14.4. 48 years later, the second most important event in the time life list of the most important events of the past millennium happened. Columbus discovers America, rediscovers America. Mm, debatable. Maybe it was John Hook. How many Europeans feel about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and so I'm, you're uh, totally right. So maybe a Chinese has a very different opinion about that. Mm? And of course, Columbus did not become famous because he was the the first to discover America, but because he was the last to discover America. <laughs> <laughs> and then, 24 years later, the third most important event in the time li life list of most important events of the last 1,000 years happened, namely um, Luther started the Reformation. Now our Chinese friends will maybe not be convinced that this was such an important thing. <laughs> But, uh, but do you see the pattern, 96, 48, 24? It's converging right there in 1540. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons, I think, why we never had a shortage of prophets claiming that the end is near. You look at the data point, you look at the um, logarithmic pro uh, plot, there is always some way of fitting a straight line through all these data points, especially if you ignore the data points. <laughs> <laughs> And, the, and, 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 and so you should, you should take all of these predictions with a grain of salt. And maybe, maybe actually there's a reason why it looks to every subject as if uh, history is accelerating dramatically. Look at yourself. Most of your memory space is allocated to the most recent events. You still know what you did yesterday. Do you, do you know what you did uh, one year ago at exactly this point in time? So the further you, further you go back in time, the, the less... Uh, the smaller the fraction of your memory space probably that you allocate to, to this uh, time. And maybe the same is true for history books. Most history books today are written about events that happened a few decades ago. 
and uh, the bulk of all the history books is really concentrated uh, on, on recent events and not on very distant events. So maybe this is just like an inverse uh, speed prior where you are um, allocating memory in, in proportion, well, exponentially in proportion to the size of the uh, previous time intervals that are um, and, and to the distance of these previous uh, time intervals. As you go back, you uh, allocate less and less memory to these events. But um, even that, if that is so, it's still clear that we are living uh, in exciting times and I think it's a privilege to be uh, part of that. And let me finish by saying one, one more thing. Um, thank you very much for your attention.